so just to give you a brief, a brief introduction, I was also part of this uh, learning to compute project. Um, and then I will walk you through how my life uh, transformed after this project and how uh, useful has it been to translate the, um, the research finding into practice. Uh, I was part of this uh, project which looked at a uh, few countries in Africa and um, Asia uh, to look into how to build a, com a competitive capacity of domestic firms uh, through export promotion and uh, uh, inflow of for, uh, FDI and inflow of technology through exporting and uh, uh, importing some of the issues that the previous two uh, presenters touched upon. As many of you might guess, I am from Ethiopia originally, so I was part of the Ethiopia team. Briefly summarizing the the finding of the project would be that it take uh, so focus on building firm capability uh, through export promotion and uh, enhancing spillovers from foreign owned firms domestically, and also it takes an ecosystem. It's not just the intervention on firm firms, but to think of the broader uh, scope of intervention in terms of building the ecosystem. Uh, and then hopefully this will address some of the market failures around uh, access to credit and market. So some co-authors, Mulu Gabriel, I don't think he's here uh, this time, and other co-authors, uh, will look, will, some of the questions we looked at. Uh, so the first one is, does entry costs matter for who gets to export? Do firms learn from exporting? And then, is there a benefit of uh, having an uh, there is, does agglomeration economies exist in Ethiopia? I wouldn't bore you with the details, but yes, was uh, the answer we found in a different set of papers we have on these issues. Basically, using formal manufacturing from Ethiopia panel data set. Quickly, um, results can be summarized that uh, it, uh, any assistance on reducing entry costs for firms into the internal, international market makes it easier for entry of new firms into the export market without any prior experience on exporting. And then firms learn, this is the last, the third result is not basically from Ethiopia, but uh, from the broader learning to compete project. We also found that uh, learning is happening more from uh, interaction between different firms than direct trade. So, so far it was my life as par part of the learning to compete team. But uh, joining uh, Brookings after this project, uh, some of my tasks I do is to deal with development community who has chosen to uh, assist uh, firms of this nature. Uh, um, basically, I want to highlight that a significant part of uh, share of firms in Africa uh, become entrepreneurs because of necessity, not because of choice. And then it seems to be the case that this is a higher for women than uh, men. And then this is uh, a sh share of uh, firms with uh, female owner owners. And you can see that this is declining with uh, as we go up the top the management level with a lower, lower and lower share of women owned firms uh, uh, in Africa, but also globally in developing countries. This figure shows you the significant interest in supporting women uh, from the development community uh, as of 2016. But I can tell you that this has been increasing and growing uh, post-2016 with all the commitment uh, from UNECA and from different uh, developed countries committing a, s a significant amount of money to support women entrepreneurs. 
um, from government's perspective. Um, this is uh, some quote from IMF work on gender budgeting. Uh, the dark blue and the slightly uh, darker blue shows you countries which have chosen to be conscious about their budget allocation when it comes to gender. And then I would remind you that I'm here to get feedback from the learning to compete community. And then basically, if um, if I have the money, if I give you the money to do whatever you do on uh, supporting women entrepreneurs, where would you put the money on? This is the question I've been asked and I'm uh, developing a report on that and it has been uh, interesting and challenging. I have not yet finalized that report. So, so this is uh, um, a report developed having in mind that there is a development community who have made uh, the decision or want to focus on women and uh, the, uh, specifically empowerment through entrepreneurship and on the ground uh, capacity building. And then as part of my presentation here, I would also like to ask whether industrial policy should have a different approach for women entrepreneurs. And so, and then we did a bit of sentiment analysis on support for women entrepreneurs. Uh, basically, Google searching uh, different stakeholders like uh, Government, uh, governments, development banks, aid organizations, private sector actors, and NGOs. And then, uh, so don't take this seriously, but it seems that the overall focus on support for women entrepreneurs is uh, primarily on physical protection of women uh, when it comes to Africa. And of course, it, it's obvious that these challenges are higher in Africa. So. Um, and then I can also say that support for women entrepreneurs directly or automatically predominantly implies that uh, women on SMEs. Uh, the moment you have women uh, in front of entrepreneurship, we're talking about something else than when we talk about entrepreneurship. Just to bring you back to the debate on the literature on where to direct our effort on. I think we have a uh, few people in this room uh, capturing the debate on where, whom to support, SMEs versus large firms. Uh, and then should we focus on firms or build the ecosystem so every firm and everyone in the, in the market has a better chance to survive and uh, perform well. Of course, there are some help support on women entrepreneurs focusing on the ecosystem in terms of um, addressing the market access and then making finance work for the poor. And then there are a number of uh, initiatives working on ecosystem development, but primarily focusing on startups, uh, especially on technology. Just to remind you, these were the two lessons from the Learning to Compete project. And then I have a question, a question that Learning to Compete was maybe one of the gender neutral approach. I'm not, uh, so the one on the red line, still on question mark is, was the focus on the entrepreneur herself or himself was part of the learning to compete. So why we need to think of, uh, to focus on the entrepreneur. So again, a few, a few uh, citations from the literature. Uh, so I don't know, some of you might have been uh, present in today's the IMF session on inequality. And one of the argument there was women bring in different sets of skills to the labor market than men. And, there's no perfect substitution between male labor force and female labor force. And then, of course, women might face uh, 
a different set of constraints than men. Uh, some in the literature indicate that women tend to divert finance from business and women are less likely to engage in competitive behavior, which is sometimes important for firm performance in different settings. And then emerging literature on uh, experimental economics um, indicate that what works and what does not work for female entrepreneurs. And then it seems to be the case that small loans or grants, even sometimes coupled with hard, hard skills, are not working for women entrepreneurs. And then some insight from psychology indicates that they should focus on the individual and, and especially focusing on shifting mindset and uh, ch challenging uh, gender norms. So what works? What works in the literature? Some interventions on focusing on the per personal initiatives or addressing the risk-taking behavior and the leadership and personal initiatives. S uh, interventions seem to work for performance and other social indicators of women entrepreneurship, well, women empowerment more broadly. And then on the challenging the gender norms, some interventions which specifically address the time constraints women entrepreneurs face or accommodate the schedule in terms of uh, the attendance of the training session coupled with uh, some affordable pro or free provision of childcare while they attend these trainings seem to work better than the more direct support on uh, finance and uh, uh, hard skill uh, provisions. Interestingly, also technology in terms of providing mo mobile saving or uh, loans in secure account work well as well. Esther Duflo summarized this, some of his findings in her Journal of Economic Literature saying that we, we need to move from micro-interventions to a more integrated approach to addressing uh, the needs of women entrepreneurs. And it seems that uh, research needs to catch up <laughs> with this expectation. And then I have, maybe I should conclude with this, should we have a different industrial policy, thinking that women entrepreneurs may be different than <laughs> male entrepreneurs. I have some, some food for thought, and uh, I'm happy to get your feedback on this. Thank you.